Hello friends, welcome back. Today in this tutorial, I'll be in Luminar Neo sharing some tips for a landscape edit. And in particular, I'm gonna share one really cool trick that I use for color grading my photos. The photo example is this one here, which was shot in Madeira on the Luminar Adventure last year. It's, uh, that's the final result of the photo. It started like this, where it was great light, great scene, great color, but raw files always look a little bit flat. I'm able to bring it to life with a few key tricks. I'm gonna hit reset and we're gonna jump into that. But first I wanna tell you about two really cool things that are happening with Luminar. Right now, they've got the ecosystem upgrade pass that's on sale for part of their back to school promotion. You're gonna be getting the volume tool, the restoration tool, uh, the AI assistant, different things like that that are coming out this fall. If you haven't yet checked it out, check it out at the link down below. And secondly, they're also just now launching the Click to Masterpiece Ultimate Kit that includes a couple of my courses as well as assets from Fabio Antonori, great street photographer, my friend Jacob, and of course Vanelli at, uh, on the Luminar team. These are courses, these are assets, these are all kinds of amazing things all wrapped together in this awesome Ultimate Bundle. Check that out also at a different link down below if you wanna check that out. That's gonna be courses, assets, presets, skies, you name it, it's a massive, massive creative kit that's gonna give you tons of options for editing your photos, as well as ed education about how to do that in Luminar Neo. And now, what I wanna do is reset this photo and jump into how I'm gonna edit this one and show you some key tips and tricks but you'll also pick up in that ultimate kit because it's got so much information in it. Now, first thing I wanna do here with this photo is actually hit auto adjust. It does a great job of just getting me started on my edit, but I wanna do a few additional things. I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast. I'm gonna pull these highlights back a little bit. I'm not going quite as low as they are, and I'm actually gonna lift the shadows more. As I said, the auto adjust is a good starting point. It's not usually a one click thing for me, but it does get me going in the right direction. I'm also gonna adjust the temperature and tint because that's something that I like to do kind of manually for lack of a better term. And I'm gonna add a tiny bit of vibrance here. So seven or eight and a little bit of sharpening as well. So call that about an 18. So if you look at the before and after, before and after, it's a good start, but we got a bit to do still. For me, the second tool that I always use is Super Contrast. And usually what I do is I drag the uh, contrast sliders in each of the three tonal areas about a quarter of the way, like around a 25, 26, something like that, just to give me an idea of what it's gonna do to the photo. Now that I've done that, I wanna come back with balance and make some adjustments to it. I'm gonna start by dragging the highlights balance to the right. The midtone balance is actually going to the left. And then the shadow balance, I'm actually going to leave alone. So if you look at the before and after, before and after, it gives a nice bit of balance in the overall tones. And that's why I like to use Develop Raw and then Super Contrast as kind of my one-two punch for starting my edits. Before and after, I think I'm in good shape. And this is where I start getting into the customization of the image. And for me, customization involves masking. Now the masking in this step and the next step, pretty simple and straightforward. The first thing I wanna do is when I look at this photo, there's kind of two sections to it, right? There's the foreground and then there's the background, which is mostly the sky. I'm gonna start with the foreground. And for me, that's usually a linear gradient. What I wanna do is just kind of drag that here and I wanna broad kind of fade here. And these things are covered in my masking masterclass, which are part of that bundle. But if you take a look at that, that gives me a nice coverage of the foreground with a nice fade into the rest of the photo. And what I wanna do is slightly increase this temperature. So I'm gonna brighten that a little bit. It gives me a little bit better visibility into that foreground, but I also wanna warm it up a little bit. The thing is adding that, that just that five on temperature, it makes it look a little bit green. I wanna amp up that warmth, but green isn't a good look. Warmth is nice, and the way to offset that green is a temperature, excuse me, a tint adjustment. And so I end up going to about a 35 on the tint, and that looks a lot better. So before and after, before and after. Now that's just the foreground, and of course, I need to adjust the sky as well. So I'm gonna close develop, I'm gonna open it again, and I'm gonna go get another linear gradient. And I often use a linear gradient for the sky instead of a sky mask, and that's because 
you have this nice fade, this transitional area where you get that nice feathering that allows you to blend what you do in the sky uh, with what you did in the foreground. And again, I talk about that in my masking class, but I've applied that there. And what I want to do is slightly uh, drop the exposure in the sky. And because I faded it, it works a little bit like a polarizer where it's a little darker in the top and then it kind of drops the exposure. Let me rephrase that. It's a little darker at the top and then that darkness kind of fades away as I approach the horizon line, which, hey, conveniently, it's where the sun is. The sun's brighter, so it kind of makes sense to do it that way. So I've dropped that exposure a little bit and I'm not going to mess with the temperature. I like that, but I do want to adjust the tint because I want to make sure the foreground and background are pretty aligned in terms of what I've done with the temperature and tint. So before and after. So I'm going to close that. And what I want to do now is get into color grading. And this is something I love to do. Color grading, the like color correction is one thing where you're kind of fixing any color cast and things like that. And that's kind of what I did with develop uh, raw as well as the two moves with develop with these masks that we just did. But now I'm getting into color grading, which is essentially putting my color stamp on it, right? This is my kind of creative approach to color. And Color Harmony is honestly the best color tool in Luminar and one that I use all the time for color grading. It's incredibly powerful. I love it. I use it all the time. And what I want to do is come in and use some of these different sections to apply my color grade. So I'm going to add some brilliance and warmth. In split color warmth, I'm going to add uh, an increase to the warmth and uh, I'm going to go negative on the cooling, but that actually just enhances the cool colors, right? So with uh, dragging warmth to the right in split color warmth, you amp up the warm colors. And by dragging coolness to the left, you amp up the cool colors. So I'm kind of creating a little bit of intensity in both. And that's something I like to do, which is color tension, kind of increasing the difference and the contrast between the warm and the cool colors and playing them off of each other. And now that I've done that, I'm going to get into color balance, which is my favorite section here. And in shadows, I just want to add some blue, which is going to create a little bit of depth and a little bit of intensity. You can kind of see that there. But I'm also going to go into highlights, and I want to add a little bit of intensity there. I want to amp up those sunrise colors in the highlights. And so this is just creating a little bit more uh, color intensity there. And so I've done that, and I love these colors. But, and there is a but, and this is the key thing that I want to talk about with color, and that is all these different moves. I've used three different tools here in Color Harmony, before and after. I love it, but it's a bit intense. And the way I like to color grade is to go into masking and use a luminosity mask because that allows me to fade my edit across the tonal areas and get a bit more control, and it reduces the intensity. So my color grade overall looks a bit smoother and a little bit more controlled as opposed to kind of hitting it with a sledgehammer, which is what it looks like now. So the way I like to do that is to pull this away from the shadows and pull this away from the highlights and concentrate more in the midtones. But then I want to fade this with these um, sliders here by grabbing that triangle and sliding it away from these bars you end up creating a nice fade that's gentle and kind of broad across these tonal areas. Uh, and I get it out of all the, uh, just the highlights and the shadows, and I fade it into those areas so it's not as intense in those areas. And what that does, and I'm kind of experimenting with it here, and what that does is give me a little bit more control, a nice hit in the midtones, which is right here, and a nice fade into the shadows, which is to the left, and into the highlights, which is to the right. Now again, I cover all this in the masking class that's included in that creative bundle. But what this does is give me the ability to have a nice color pop without being a massive kind of uh, sledgehammer type approach to color. So if you look at the before and the after, I've now got a lot more gentle color grade. And that's how I like to do color grading with Color Harmony because it gives me the ability to come in, have a nice pop of color without overdoing it. So luminosity masks with Color Harmony, it's, um, you know, chef's kiss, as they say. It's just absolutely fabulous. And there's one more thing I like to do before I wrap this up, and that is to come in, and I'll do this often at the end, is go back into develop and just add a little bit more contrast just to create a little bit more depth in the photo. So I'm going to go mid-30s and maybe pull the highlights down a little bit. And all I've done here is just create a little bit more contrast overall. So before and after. 
And that's just a finishing move that I like to do that gives me the ability to come in and control the light at the end of my edit. So overall, my edit started like that. Beautiful scene, great light, great color, but it's a raw file. It's slightly underexposed, which I tend to do, but a few key moves, a couple of masks, a little bit of color work, especially with that luminosity mask on color harmony, gives me the ability to control the color and the light and gives me a gorgeous result. That's how I did this one. Hope it gives you some good insights into how I like to do these things. Check out those links down below to get a great deal on Luminar and to get that creative bundle. And uh, hope you enjoyed this one, my friends. Thanks for checking it out. I'll be back soon with more videos. You guys take care. And until next time, adios.